That's why Jesus chose that story. That's why he mentioned the Samaritan. Everybody is everybody else's keeper. Our responsibility is one another. Our responsibility, because we know the truth. We know God. We should act like it. We should go out there and be that example. By seeing you and what you do and how you touch the world, then they'll say, man, why are you helping me? Why are you reaching out to me? I don't know you. Then you get to say, that's Jesus Christ in me. That's the love of God coming through. That's what you see. That's what you feel. That's what you experience. Then they'll say, wow. So that's what being saved is about. That's what being a Christian is about. It's about love, it's about giving, it's about sharing, it's about helping. It's not just about shouting. You know what I'm saying? When you have the bank standing in line waiting to cash a check, you're not, hallelujah, praise the Lord, holy. Yeah. We got to take what's in here. Bring it up here. My parents discouraged me, my friends discouraged me. I said, you know what, I don't care. I got to make it, man. Other people are doing other good. I'm going to go out here and find out. So I used to go in abandoned houses and you know, rip the walls out. And I same thing. So I didn't know it, though. You know what I'm saying? I just had to go out there and chuck. Years later, I was making $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 $40, flipping houses. All from way back, freezing in those abandoned houses. And my friends are saying, man, are you crazy? What are you doing, man? <laughs> you get killed in here. You don't know who's going to come up in here. I said, look, I got to do what I got to do, man. Yeah, I can't go to school and learn all this stuff. Nobody's teaching all this stuff. And then if they do, they want to charge me an arm and a leg. I got to do what I got to do. So when I started getting into the real estate business, it was the same thing, you know? You don't have the money to buy that house. You don't have the money to, for the materials. So you have to be real creative, you know? You have to really be good to people because you're going to need help. Um, he's a very sweet person. He's a very sweet person? Yeah. How, how long ago was that when you met him? Um, I would say about three years ago. About three years ago? Now, I've heard a story from one of his sons about, you know, about some sneakers or something. Can you, uh, can you tell yeah. me that story? <laughs> oh, because um, I, he came up to visit us one evening and I was complimenting him on his shoes and I asked him if I could have them. And he was like, are you serious about having my shoes? I said, yeah, I like them. And he took them off his feet to me and left our house in his socks. Yeah. And that's a different one. Even though as a generous person, you know, still someone to just leave in their sock. You know, that's that's something cool right there. You're gonna need some help. Don't think you're gonna go out here and make all this money by yourself. I don't need nobody gonna get out here and do this thing. No, you're gonna need a lot of help and a lot of love. So you better be nice to people now, because you're gonna need them. It was real fun with him though. Yeah, he was real cool. He was real cool. He's like uncle to me. Does he ever come over and give you guys money Yes. Not a little amount. Not a little amount. He gives us steaks. Yeah. What did you say? He gives us steaks. Steaks are great. Yeah. Trust that. So when I got my first house, he doesn't even know this story. <laughs> when I got my first house, I was so excited. I stayed here five days a week. I stayed in the house. I was so happy that I had a grill. I didn't want to leave. I just going to work every minute I had, you know. I would shower there. I would just leave to go eat, go right back to work. I finished that house, sold it. I used an agent to sell it, the first one. After that, I sold my own. 
It's way too small. I sold that house, I think I made about $20,000. It took me two months to fix that house up. But when you're a kid, and you're making $20,000 in, in, in a couple of months, I mean, you're rich, you know? I mean, even now, I mean, it doesn't matter. Still, it's a lot of money. But my point is, just because you don't have the education, the skills, the training, opportunities, you could be living in abject poverty, have nothing today, and be rich later. You all have the ability and opportunity to do it. Don't worry about what you can't do. Concentrate on what you can do. Basically, you try to get them to set life goals and achieve them. You know, that's how I met them, basically. How long have you known? Uh, about close to a year now. Close to a year? Yeah. He's looked out for you, then thinking you looked out something? Definitely. He, uh, knowledge, you know. He's so successful. He's just, he just looks out. He has a lot of success. He's knowledgeable. Go out, you know, take you out to dinner, you know, spit the game to you. He's just straight up. He's just now, I want to say this before I let Jake come up here. I give glory and thanks to the Lord. I'm a Bible believing, Jesus loving Son of God. Everything I do, say, everything I act upon, it comes from the Holy Spirit. My drive is from the Holy Spirit. I spend 15 to 20 hours a day, every single day, except for Sunday, serving people I don't even know, helping the poor. I use all that money that I made, and I dumped it three times. I made a bunch of money, a whole bunch of money, and gave it all away, every dollar. Did it again, every dollar. Did it again, every dollar. I call it dumb. Every dime, I swear to God. And now I'm about to do it again. I'm about to try to raise like $3 million. And uh, doing the same thing, flipping houses and doing deals with different businesses and stuff. Just so I can support the people in the street that I help. So you were going, you were bus stop the kids and you just came by. What, how late was that? Like? Oh, it was late. It was like maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. 12, 30, 1 o'clock. What do you do when you, when you stop? What did you say? He asked me why was I crying, and I explained to him that my boyfriend had kicked me and my kids out. You okay? At that point, you know, what did he do? Um, he, then he um, gave me a ride to where I needed to go and room, money for a room. Because, you know, with my ministry, there's no ties and offerings. You know, I don't, I don't have a group of people, and then I can raise an offering and Take care of the things I need to take care of for the health of my dad. There is no congregation. The whole world is my congregation. These people are poor. These people are disenfranchised. These people are displaced. These people are lost. The last thing in the world they need is for me to be trying to dig in their pockets. I don't have that opportunity. My, my resources come from blessings, you know what I'm saying? I work for every dollar that I had, every dollar. I wish I had a group of people like this, I could just say, hey, everybody, you know what I'm doing? You wanna help? Okay, let's get some money together, let's do this. And then it'll be done, it's easy. But I don't, so it's extremely, extremely difficult. For me, every day to work 15 to 20 hours a day for free, every single day, it's the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. So, just keep on doing what you do. Love the Lord with your whole soul. Take this glory and honor that you have in this house. Take it to the street and let's save some lives together. Thank you.